All right, 12.3, investigating variability. Begin with the data. So they give you pretty much every number between one and 20, every whole number. And we're gonna have to make some calculations. So I wanna tell you this right off the bat. If you are not making these calculations in this video, um, I'm gonna know. So go back, look about how to do it on the calculator, look, about, look to see how you can do it on Desmos. If you are not calculating these values, I will know and I, I cannot justify giving credit unless you're actually calculating the values. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do, well actually, you know what? You're gonna write, you're gonna tell me what to do. If you have a graphing calculator or if you have decimals, you are going to write, how could I find these values? Okay, so I'm gonna do it in a calculator because I find it much easier. Um, you can, I sent a post about how to download a graphing calculator for free. They have them on it for your computer. I'll post the link again. I think it's easier to use a calculator, but Desmos does work as well with the link I posted. All right, so first things first, clear out my lists. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then real quick, one var stat gives me all the information I need. All right, so my mean is 10.5. Standard deviation is 5.766. Um, my median is 10.5. My IQR is just going to be Q3 minus Q1, or 15.5 minus 5.5, so that's an IQR of 10. All right, so that's all for number one. Number two, how does the standard deviation and mean change when you remove the greatest value from the data set? How do they change if you add a value to the data, data set that is twice the greatest value? So let's call this A and B, right? These are asking us two different things. So I'm gonna write mean, standard deviation, mean, standard deviation. So try that now. What is the mean when you remove the greatest value from the data set? What is the standard deviation? So if I go to stat, edit, remove 20 from the data set, run the same test. And I can see that my X bar is now 10 my standard deviation is 5.477. So you can see that both the mean and standard deviation have gone down when you take away that largest value. B, what happens if you add something that is twice the greatest value to the data set? So I'm gonna assume they mean keep 20 there and then additionally put in a 40 kind of unclear, right? They could be saying take away 20, put 40 there, but that's that's not very clear, so I'm gonna try and do it that way. So let's go to stat, calc, we'll run it, 11.9, 11.905, so we've gone up quite a bit from 10.5, and my standard deviation is 8.43, wow, that, 8.434. That really went up a ton. We were at 5.76, now we're all the way up here. So when you take away extremes, um, actually, make sure, let me make sure they're not asking this question later on. They don't ask it, okay. So when you take away extremes, when I take away 20, that takes away values from the edges of the data set. Values on the edges of the data set are what are pulling that standard deviation up, right? 20 is super far away from this mean of 10.5. So by taking it away, I lower that standard deviation. Things are not as far apart anymore. When I add a number that is super far away from the mean, 40 is so far away from 10.5, that one value really jumps that standard deviation up a lot. So that's what we call an extreme, and we'll soon learn about outliers. They really do affect our standard deviation and mean quite a bit, which is why we don't we need to know about them if we're looking at a data set. If we don't know there are outliers, that really um, changes the story a whole lot. 
Okay. Um, what do you predict will happen to the standard deviation mean when you remove the least value from the data set? Check to see if your prediction was correct. So make a prediction. So I'm going to predict that if I remove the least value, if I remove one, I think my standard deviation is actually going to be the same as it was up here. I think it's also going to be 5.477 because 1 and 20 um, are about as far. No, they're both, they're both 9.5 away from 10.5. So I'd say removing 1 is just the same as removing 20 in terms of the standard deviation. For the mean, I imagine it will go up. So if we went down to 10, we're going to go up to 11. So that's my prediction. Let's see if it's right. So I'm going to remove one, and I'm also going to move that 40 because that was not part of the deal. Okay, so let's see if this works. My mean is 11, and my standard deviation is 5.477, so my prediction was correct. Great. Four. What happens to the standard deviation and mean when you add a value to the data set equal to the mean? Add a second value equal to the mean, what happens? Okay, so they actually are not asking for prediction, so I'm not going to ask that, but you know, think about it. What do you think is going to happen? So I'm going to put that one back. It's going to be at the end. It's not a big deal. So they want me to add another value equal to the mean, so 10.5. So my prediction is if I'm adding a value that's equal to the mean, my mean's just going to stay the same. It's going to stay the same as 10.5. What I think will change is my standard deviation is going to go down because I have another value that's very close to the middle that makes standard deviation low. So let's see if that works out. And we get a mean of 10.5 and a standard deviation of 5.627, which is exactly, no, I'm sorry, not exactly, it is lower than our original standard deviation. All right, five, add, change, and remove values from the data set to answer the question. What appears to change more easily, the standard deviation or the interquartile range? Explain your reasoning. All right, so give that response a shot. Maybe play around with the numbers in your graph and calculator to see what happens. Okay, so if we look at right the IQR, that's determined by two numbers. That's determined by Q3 and Q1. So in this case, Q3 is 15.5, so right between here is Q3. And Q1 is going to be 5.5, uh, so right between 5 and 6. So this is sort of the issue with the calculation of a median. Although it is 5.5 and 15.5 are, are sort of in the middle of their respective halves, it's only reliant on these two numbers directly, five and six. I could change seven, eight, nine, I could make them all 10. I could make 11, 12, 13, 14, I can make that 10, right? That wouldn't change my Q1 and Q3. They're only dependent on these two numbers right here. So affecting extremes and affecting numbers in between is not going to affect it. As long as five, six, 15, and 16 are there, my Q1 and Q3 will always stay the same in effect, meaning my interquartile range will always stay the same. So we can say Q1 and Q3 are not affected by the majority of the data. I could change one number slightly or in reality, I could change any number here besides 5, 6, 15, and 16, and that would definitely affect the standard deviation. Because even if I change 18 up here to 18.1, that number is now a little bit further away from the mean. So that's going to increase my standard deviation. Let's say I, tw I change this 12 to an 11.9. That's slightly closer to my mean, so my standard deviation is going to be slightly smaller. Not by much, but it will be slightly smaller. So Q1 and Q3, while they are helpful, IQR is definitely a good measure of variability in some cases. 
it is nowhere near as accurate as standard deviation. So we can write that. I'll abbreviate it. Standard deviation, SD, is more accurate than IQR. All right, that is all for 12.3.